I cried funeral, a poem in words and erotic movements by me. <laughs> it was dark as a coal old picnic on the day Grandad Ackroyd dropped dead. Work was scarce as rocking horse droppings. <laughs> Not a church roof for miles with lead. <laughs> so cold that the flame on the candle got frozen one Wednesday night and we had to warm it up in the oven before we could get it to light. <laughs> Some brass monkeys outside sung carol soprano. You could hear them cursing and swearing as they wandered around lost in the cold and the frost. They couldn't find their bearings. <laughs> On Sunday, our chicken for dinner was a pigeon from off next door's loft and my dad pumped it up with his bike pump too hard and our Sunday dinner buggered off. <laughs> what would you like to eat now, dad? said our mum, picking her nose. <laughs> Hard boiled eggs, our dad said, you can't get your fingers in those. <laughs> couldn't afford to kill the chicken so we boiled some water up hot and with bunches of dried peas tied to its knees it paddled about on the top <laughs> <laughs> me granddad had mortgaged his pension till 1994 while me gran in her vest was outside doing her best with a red light above cold shed door <laughs> I can't stands no more, the old man cried, a mad light shone in his glass eye. We'll have to defraud the insurance man. Hands up, want to volunteer to die. <laughs> well, my mum said she would have, but she was too busy. Our Albert said his library book was due back. <laughs> Gran said she would, but her and her mates had got tickets for last Saturday's match. So we drew straws to settle the matter, but there was never no doubt because my dad cut my granddad's in half with bread knife just as he was pulling it out. <laughs> I'm too old to die, he said, using the cat as a club to belabor me, dad. All right, said dad, you don't have to die. Just lie down and pretend as you are. So my granddad lay down on the hearth rug and we called the doctor in. My grand took out a bottle and some glasses and got him smashed on a dandelion gin. <laughs> he said, your granddad has died of a very rare disease. A bad case of tropical frostbite. <laughs> then he staggered off out and we all heard a shout from the street because he slipped in some dog shite. <laughs> Sorry about that. But there isn't a lot of rhymes with frostbite, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not that you can slip in anyway, you know. <laughs> Billy ran round for the man from the Prue. Gran filled him with dandelion gin. He paid £4.10 in used chip shop yen and said, when are you burying him? Oh, we weren't thinking of burying him, Grandma said. I was thinking of having him stuffed myself <laughs> or embalming him in that plastic craft and keeping him up mantel shell. <laughs> Nay, yon is illegal, said the man from the Prue. Your granddad will have to be buried in the box and shroud in constipated ground. <laughs> At this, Grandad looked a bit worried. <laughs> Man from the Prue said he'd come to the burying and see as how things was done quite right. Then he staggered off out and we all heard a shout from the street because he slipped on some more of that stuff. What I'll tell you about. <laughs> I've just done that, said the doctor, so the insurance man rubbed his nose in it. <laughs> Pretend corpse now had to be buried. Me dad got an old kipper crate. When the holes we had plugged in the wood, it looked good. With plastic brass angles on, great. The only bit that rhymes hardly gets a bloody titter. Tummy. <laughs> we'll only bury you just till he's gone. Then we'll dig you up, honest, dad said. Took a bottle of gin before granddad give in and lay in the box to play dead. <laughs> the grand looked in the box saying, what a lovely corpse. <laughs> Tears fell on her dripping and toast. <laughs> Till the body at rest shoved his hand up a vest saying, now then, how's that for a ghost? <laughs> so! <laughs> she like that. So! So 
So, we put the box on Big Mabel's coal cart. And off to Cemetery we set. We followed on bikes, and all went quite right, till another burying we met. A policeman was stood on point duty, because there was a fault in the traffic lights. But he fell to the ground with his arms flailing round, because he slipped in an overload of that stuff. <laughs> 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 We just did that, said the doctor and the insurance man, said the policeman. Well, <laughs> as the copper hit the ground, the traffic flew round, and the two Berians got in a jam. Their driver took a poke at me dad with a wrench and got a kick in the shoemakers off me mum. <laughs> when we sorted it out, we'd got the wrong box. Grandma said, "E, we won't see no more of him. When their driver come round, our burying we found had gone to the crematorium. <laughs> By the time that we got there, the service was done. You could hear the organ play as the congregation wet ankies and sniffed, and our kipper box went on its way. <laughs> the shutters were open, we all heard the flames, and suddenly my granddad gave a yell. And a coughing with legs and it's our send on fire and out on the conveyor belt. <laughs> Over the pews and out through the window, the burning kipper box ran. And we all cheered our crate as it swam through the lake, chased by me dad and me mum. <laughs> A blessed miracle, said me gran. But the man from the crew went quite white. Ruined the road. He would have said more, but he slipped in the road and another road of that stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.